Devin Charlton just broke the indoor 60 meter hurdles world record with a time of 767 at the Mill Rose Games this past weekend against an elite field filled with world championships, Olympic medalists, a world-class field, and she gapped them all by the first hurdle with an electric start that she held throughout the throughout the line. This was one of the smoothest races I've seen all year over 33-inch hurdles. In the women's field, this is one of the smoothest races I've ever seen because De Devin Shelton has gotten this start before. This is what led her to her personal best before, 772, and now, not only did she get the start, but she held it. She maintained position the entire race. A few races, she's had this electric start and got caught at hurdle four. This time, it was different. This time, she, ex she extended the gap mid-race. Already created a, a, a decent gap, a decent marginal gap between the, the start blocks and hurdle one and two. Then hurdle three continued the move through hurdle four, five and the finish line with ease, extending the gap even more. If there were five more hurdles, who knows what she would have done? Who knows what she would have done? But now this field of women's hurdlers going into the World Indoor Championship is wide open now. It's wide open now because the top three, her, Tia Jones and Toby Amosan, this is all of their first time ever cracking 7-7. Seven, seven. Now she's the only one to have ever cracked 7-7. Seven, seven. Or she's the only one to go under 7-7, seven, seven, which she ran 7-67, right? But this was her first year cracking 7-7. Seven, seven. This was Toby Amosan's first year cracking 7-7. Seven, seven. This was T Tia Jones' first year cracking 7-7. Seven, seven. And this is Toby Amosan's first time returning to the Indoor 60 in over two, three years. This is Tia Jones' first time in the Indoor 60 in a while as well. Devin Charlton has been chopping at the bit, running a lot of 7-8, seven, 7-8, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. Finally, 7-7 seven, seven this year, and then boom, 7-6, right? So this field is still wide open, even though she's run an incredible 7-67. The beautiful thing about the hurdles is it's still any person's game, unless you can run it consistently. The reason why we knew Aries Merritt was going to win the world champion or win the Olympic championships and possibly run that world record is because he was the only person in history for eight, no, for I think 10 weeks straight to run 12 8. No one's ever done that. No one's ever been that consistent. That lights out. 12 8. Every time I touch the track, I'm a walking 12 8. We don't see that. And we haven't seen it from this field. We've seen them consistently break 7-7. Seven, seven, but this will be her first time cracking 7-6. Seven, now, if she can do it another week in another week before we get into Worlds. We still got two more weeks. I don't know if she's going to be racing next week or the week after. But we still got two more weeks before World Indoor, before World Indoor Championships. If she can stay in that barrier, stay around that 7-6 area, or even that 7-7 seven, seven low, 7-7-0, seven, 7-7-0-1-ish seven, oh, seven, seven, oh, area, then maybe we have a chance of saying she's the shoe win. But right now, even with the world record, even with how smooth that race was, it takes a lot for you to put that race together. It takes a lot. Over hurdles, over five 33-inch barriers spaced close to 10 meters apart, three steps in between, eight to seven steps to get to that first hurdle, Finishing off that last hurdle and maintaining that torso alignment so you can power through the line, right? It takes a lot to put this race together. This isn't 60 meters flat. This is 60 meter hurdles. It's a different kind of race, a different kind of obstacles and barriers you got to go through, right? Uh, no, no pun intended. It takes a lot to put that race together. It'd be exciting to see if she can do it again next week, if she runs next week or the week after that as well, right? If she could put that together and on a consistent basis, then we can kind of say, yeah, 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 she separated herself from the pack. But right now, it's just a beautiful thing to see her run that world record, right? A beautiful thing. And it puts her ahead of the pack. I mean, not only is it a world record, it's a world lead, of course, boom, right? Puts her ahead of the pack. But she still has other people that have ran consistently 771, 772. And that field is very tight knit, very close together. But now she's arrived as the head honcho of the group. 
but not by much. Even with the world record, I know you guys are going to be killing me about this in the comments, but not by much. Head honcho of the group, but not by much. In regards to consistency, remember, she's ran seven nines, seven eights, and only a few seven sevens these past few weeks. And these other girls have ran a few seven sevens these past few weeks as well. The group is a lot closer than what it may seem, even after she's running 767. What will determine whether or not she creates distance between her and the other women in this field is how she does these next two weeks leading into the World Indoor Championships. And then she's going to have to go to the Bahamas to run at her race and win her, in, or her, her national meet in order to come back to Albuquerque, New Mexico for the world, or not Albuquerque, New Mexico, to come back to Gaslow for the World Indoor Championships. So what she does over there will determine how far ahead of the pack she is, or is this still as tight of a race as I believe? Because I still believe it's a really close race between her, Tia Jones, Toby Amusan, and also Danielle Williams. I think there's four women that can really, really get this gold medal. And I don't believe Devin Charlton is a shoe win just yet. So I'm excited to see what she does for these next two weeks. But other than that, this world record does something for your confidence as well. It can do two things. It can make you press and make you forced to do it again. And now you're forcing it. And when it comes to hurdles, if you force it, you're losing it. You force it, you're losing it. Or it can give you the confidence to trust yourself and believe in your talents, relax and execute just as well as you did last week. And continue to run some of these blistering times that she's now very, very, very much capable of doing. It's all a mindset. It's a mindset shift. And we'll see what happens when she touches that track again. Is she going to be trying to force herself to run 7-6 again? Or is she going to trust the fact that she's got it in her? And if it comes, it comes. Will she still just focus on race execution, putting, uh, hitting the best positions she can in and off of the hurdle? Executing her race strategy when it comes to her patient uh, approach to hurdle one, how she's coming off of hurdle five, things in that nature? Or will this be forced to do what she did last week again? That's the mindset shift. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm excited to see that come into fruition. And if that is panned out correctly, I think we might see somebody really separate from the field when we get to gas low. But if it doesn't happen, this is going to be a very, very tight competition between the top four. These ladies are real close. Real close. And these next two weeks and what she does at her national meet will determine if there's going to be a gap or not.